Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Curcio and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. It's sure a privilege to have you here with me, whether this is your first time or you are returning to my channel. This is a YouTube live streaming event. Today is Monday, April 4th and the year is 2022. I've got a treat for you tonight. We are going to make an incredible handmade baby card and I've got a twist for you because I've been reading your comments and listening to you. So I've got a new size Z fold for you tonight. I'm going to be making a five by seven card, but don't worry. I've got two other samples to share with you in alternate sizes, lots of ideas for you. And I'm going to give you a ton of stamping tips along the way, as well as making this fun fold card. Now, this is your first time visiting with me. I want to make sure you know all about the free project sheet. When tonight's live stream is over, you're going to be able to click down below the video title in the video description, and there will be a link that leads you over to the project sheet, which includes multiple pictures of all the cards I'm going to be sharing tonight, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies. Now, I also want to tell you a little bit about how you can chat with us tonight, because as I said, I come back and I read every single comment whether you are here live or you are watching the replay. But in order to do so, YouTube requires that you log into your Gmail account to chat or to comment. So make sure that you do that. And then one last housekeeping item, I wanna take a moment and introduce you to our YouTube moderator tonight. That is Gina Curcio Holly. You might recognize that surname. Gina is my daughter. She is also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio. And she's been stamping with me the entire 23 plus years that I've been a demonstrator. She's amazingly talented in her own right. And just as a little side note, she is live with me on the last Monday of every single month. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that and hit that bell icon in the word all because you're not going to want to miss the mother daughter fun that we have on that last Monday every month. Gina is here during the live stream to be able to answer your questions and provide links because there is no way I can keep up because I'm going to be stamping. So how about we're ready to get started? Let's go over to the table. All right, I have got my paper trimmer here and we're going to start by doing some very simple scoring. Now I'm not going to go through all the cutting dimensions because as I said to you, those are going to be in the project sheet, but I'm going to talk through some of the basic ones. Now the card I'm demonstrating is a five by seven because you have all been asking for them. Please, please a bigger card. Because if you're like me, there are times you go in on a joint gift or you have an office staff that wants to sign it. You just need more space, even retirement and graduation cards. But I have two other sizes for you, actually another size for you, which is an A2, but I have several samples. So make sure you stay with me. This is seven by 10. We are gonna score in half. And that's going to be at five inches. So let me line that up here and then I'm going to use that light blade for scoring. So that's our first piece. I'm going to set that off to the side. Now the great thing about this trimmer I want to point out is it includes both the scoring and the cutting blade. They navigate up and down and out of the way, which means you can leave them right on that clear cutting mat at all times. I also love that there's a nice straight ledge here at the top and at the bottom, I can't do anything straight. So this is really a helpful little thing. This arm extends well past 17 inches a little bit. Great for our scrapbookers. This next piece is six inches by eight inches. And again, we're going to go in half. Now I'm going to give you lots of tips about this card along the way. So hang with me. This last layer is five by six and we're going to score it in half by three. I want you to know that you can adapt this to any size Z fold that you want. So please keep that in mind. So this is the smaller card. We're going to start by folding that in half and I love my bone folder. So that's the first one. And here was that medium size. And here is the second one. And by the way, these are all great sizes. If you want to make independent cards of the size as well. So you can use this, this project sheet for lots of different things. Now let's start by getting the pieces ready before we can assemble it, because that's super important. I tried to do that last and that just did not work. So we're going to decorate first. Okay. We're going to work with the small card feature first. Everything I'm doing is really simple. And here's the best part. You can adapt it to what you have at home. So let's start with doing some stamping for this. And I've got a scratch piece of white cardstock here. And we're going to start with some really cute images because we're going to do a baby card, but I have two other samples for you. Now I'm going to be using the stamp set called All for Baby. As a matter of fact, I'm using the whole bundle because if you're like me, you're not going to want one without the other. 
Now I will tell you that this bundle is currently on the last chance products list, which means it is retiring. The last day you can get it is May 2nd. It will not be in the new catalog that debuts on May 3rd. You're gonna want it after you see tonight. So we're gonna be using this. So here on my paper, I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping from that stamp set. I pulled out this little cute striped onesie and you're gonna notice right away when I ink this up and stamp this that it's not gonna look like your typical stamp. Lots of firm, even pressure. Make sure you trace that design. Look at that. It looks more like a photograph, doesn't it? Well, this is a distinctive stamp set, which means that this is intended to look more like a photograph than an actual stamped image. And that's one reason I absolutely love it. Now I'm going to go over to the crumb cake ink. And again, everything is from the same stamp set. Look at this cute little teddy bear. Now I re-inked this ink pad today, so I'm kind of hoping it's not too, too dark. I think it's gonna be just right. And you're gonna see that distinctive image once again. I mean, just look at the density. It almost looks like you can touch it, doesn't it? All right, I'm gonna clean that off and then I'm gonna switch one more time to one more color. Now this is the beauty of having the bundle, the stamps and the dies, because guess what? There's a separate die for all these pieces. And as long as I live a little space here between these images, guess what we can do? We can die cut them all at the same time. And boy, do I have a great tip for you about that. So I've got a little heart and I've got a little bow. All right, so we're good to go on that. Let me close this up for right now. And let me talk to you about the dies. Now, if you're like me and you love the fact that you can die cut all the pieces at one time, but you struggle with these little tiny pieces because no matter what you do, they wiggle all on your platforms and you have the toughest time die cutting that stamped image. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull out the small ones, and of course you'll get the idea with the big ones, but I wanna introduce you to a product that I cannot live without. Now this is the Post-it Labeling and Cover-Up Tape. Now this is not sold in my online store because it's not a stamp and a product. This is something I just love to use here in my studio, and I have it linked for you because I had a feeling that you were gonna like it as well. You're gonna find this over on my website at lisasstampstudio.com, click on shop, and then about the fifth one down, you'll see craft room favorites. And that's where I've linked all these little things that I have found that aid me in my paper crafting, and I knew you would love them too. So I'm just gonna take smaller pieces here, and I'm gonna line up my little onesie, and I'm gonna tape that die right down to the paper. Isn't that fantastic? We don't have to struggle with these little pieces anymore. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the heart, and of course, the same thing with the bow. I think you get the idea. And of course, I would do the teddy bear. And the beauty of this is one crank through your die cutting machine, and you're gonna have all the pieces pre-cut. Now, I did do that ahead of time to save a little bit of time here on camera. So we've got the onesie, we got the bear, we've got the bow, and of course, we have this, which is the heart. Now, let's talk a little bit about putting these pieces together. And I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit so get you a little bit closer. I like to use glue dots whenever I'm using these little tiny pieces. So let me give you a tip about glue dots. Between the layers of paper, you're gonna find the dot. I don't like to use my fingers. I'm getting older, the dexterity and the arthritis is kicking in. So I love my take your pick tool. There is a putty tip here that helps me pick up those pieces. And that other end has interchangeable parts that come with it. And this is the paper piercing tool attachment. So all I'm gonna do is get up right underneath there and I'm gonna add that heart right here to my little onesie. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with that bow and we're gonna add that here. I love that I can slide it if I'm a little bit off like I was. And I'm gonna put the bow here on my teddy bear, just something a little bit different. And I'm gonna push this bear off to the side. Now I'm gonna reach in for my silicone craft sheet. If you've watched my videos before, you know how much I love this thing because liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it, which means I'm gonna keep my work surface sticky free. Now, I did take the liberty of die cutting this adorable little hanger before you join me. There, you'll see that there's two of them in here, so you can die cut several. I did that on So Saffron cardstock. Now, I'm gonna attach these, and I decided to save this and show you because I wanna show you another craft room favorite. This is the Precision Tip Glue Applicator. And we have gotten so many emails from you thanking us for providing this little tip and link to this product. All I did was I took the multi-purpose liquid glue sold in my online store 
and I squeezed it down inside of here. Now this is a very thick, strong glue. So you're gonna have to tap out those little bit of air bubbles and be patient, but once it's filled, you are good for a really, really long time. There is a silicone tip here that encases this, so you don't have to worry about it drying out. That rubber band was a tip from a YouTube viewer. Thank you so much. That keeps it from flopping around. Now, I like to get it started here because if you're like me, you don't like surprises, right? Unlike the glue that comes from the actual glue bottle, which is not very thin, it's going to be hard to get it in those little tiny areas. But I want you to see how tiny I can get these dots. I mean, I can make them microscopic tiny, which is fantastic for those detailed dyes. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold this over your hanger so you get an idea of placement. And now that I got my glue started, I'm just going to put a, you know, I'm just going to drag the tip actually, to be honest with you. I'm not even going to worry about little dots. And as I told you, this glue is very, very strong. You do not need to put it everywhere. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to angle that right on top of that hanger. And there we go. It's already set to go. Now we're going to come back to this in a minute. But I want to talk to you about a couple things on this. Now, I have had many of you ask, does this not get dried out? And the answer is no. What I like to do is kind of pinch it through my silicone craft sheet to get any excess glue off the tip. And then I just recap it with the silicone lid. This is the exact same initial bottle that I filled almost two years ago. This is a game changer, okay? Again, in my craft room favorites. So you're going to see we've got our little onesie here. So let's go ahead now and let's start adding some images to the front of this. Now, before you join me, I took the liberty of cutting some designer series paper. Now, the one thing about Stampin' Up! that you're going to love is the color coordination. So our designer series paper match our ink pads, that match our accessories, our cardstock, and so on. It is an award-winning designer papers year after year for a good reason. They are double-sided, so don't you love that? So you've got one purpose on one side, but the other side is really more generic, which means you can use it year after year for different themes. So I'm gonna use this side tonight and I'm gonna flip that over and I'm gonna use my silicone craft sheet again. And I have my stamp and seal plus. Now this adhesive is very, very strong. So I don't need to cover every inch of it. And because I don't do anything straight, I'm gonna open that up so I can see my crease. And then I am going to leave a small border on this layered card right here. All right, so we've got that. I also took the liberty of die cutting this. This is a little adorable scallop frame, and I do want to show you where this came from. This is from the Scalloped Contours dies. Hugely popular, so you don't have to worry about this retiring. It is going to be in the new catalog. I love the graduated sizes and, of course, that scallop trim. And there's a stamp set that coordinates with that. So that's how I got this frame. So let's go ahead and let's add our little onesie to this. So the best way to do this is to actually use some dimensionals, but I wanna give you a tip. Now you'll recall that we added glue here. Let's go ahead and use those dimensionals to our favor because if you're like me and you don't do it perfectly, you might be concerned that there's an area that's lifting. So I'm gonna use that dimensional to my advantage and tack that in place. I found by gluing it down first, it made my life a whole lot easier. Now down here at the legs, I found that these dimensionals were too big. I'm switching over to those mini dimensionals. Let's add those here. And again, that take your pick tool is gonna to be my best friend. It's gonna help me remove those paper backings because I do suffer from osteoarthritis in my basal joints. So those little small dexterity things are quite painful for me. And then this, I think I missed one. This is gonna go right smack dab here. So we've got a really cute little focal point. Now this is going to go on the front of the small card. And as I mentioned to you before, you're gonna be able to use this Z Fold card in a number of ways. You can create individual cards from what I'm gonna show you tonight, or you can create this one really impressive fun fold card. So again, taking off those paper backings. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add this here to the front panel but I'm gonna scoot it up a little bit because I don't know about you, I think that every card needs a greeting, right? So this is from the exact same stamp set. I stamped it and I bordered it before you join me. Again, the color coordination with the mint. And let's go ahead and add some more dimensionals to this. I like to make sure these are well balanced. My cards are gonna go through the mail meter in the post office. So I am very cognizant that they're gonna go through those rollers and that machine. So again, I'm just going to line this up and I'm going to put this right here near the bottom. So we've got this part all finished, but I decided I want to do a little something special on this first layer. 
and I cut another piece of designer series paper from that exact same package, just another pattern. Isn't this a great way to expound on your purchase to have alternate choices? But I'm gonna do something special here. So I'm gonna flip this over and this time I'm grabbing my tear and tape. Now this is a very, very strong adhesive and I certainly wanna make sure I've got this going the right way. And I'm gonna add it close to the outside edge. That's gonna be an important tip for you. It is used just like its name is intended. You can lay it down and then you can use your nail and then tear it. And then I'm gonna do one across the bottom here. I wanna make sure that I'm working as close to the edge as possible. I don't wanna impede this opening. I am going to press that backing down inside that paper because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove that paper backing to reveal the other sticky side. And because it's a nice long strips, this makes this really, really easy to use. Now the Stampin' Seal Plus is really strong, but because I know I'm gonna do something special here, I wanted even stronger adhesive, and that's what this is. So I'm gonna place this underneath so you get a better visual. And I'm gonna work near the bottom here and I'm gonna tack that in place. I wanna make sure there's no adhesive here at the top. We are gonna come back to this in just a moment. All right, let's work on that next layer. This time, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. My designer series paper does not have a direction. So that's really not imperative to me on being cognizant on which way it's going to go. And you're gonna see that I picked the same color palette and the same papers, and I just cut them in the different sizes, which are all in your project sheet. If your pattern has a direction, you're gonna to wanna to pay close attention to this very next step. I'm looking to leave a border here. This needs to be rotated. So now the card is backwards. So the crease is here on the right-hand side and it opens this way. Now for the inside of this one, we're gonna do some decorating as well. So I've got another scallop frame from those exact same dies and I cut an insert that fits beautifully in here. This is in your project sheet directions. Now this time I'm gonna use some more of those greetings in that stamp set and really enjoy using all the verbiage that's in there. Stampin' Up! does a great job with that. So let me see, I want this one. Little hands, little feet, big love. And this time I'm using basic gray. Now oftentimes we get gravitate to the black, don't we? And I love black as well, but sometimes on a subtle card like this, I don't want it to overemphasize the images. I don't want it to be too stark. I'm going to come back to my So Saffron ink. Remember that little heart that we used before? Let's go ahead and use that again. This time I'm going to add one here and I'm going to add a couple here. Just give this a little pizzazz. And do you remember that teddy bear that we just used a few minutes ago? Well, we're going to end up adding that in just a moment. Let's flip this over and we're going to add some adhesive to the back. Now I'm walking you through the steps of decorating this because not only can you make individual cards from all the samples I'm sharing with you on these panels, but you are actually going to learn some great ways to use the stamps and the dies. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that teddy bear now and we're gonna flip that over and we are gonna go back to dimensionals one more time because I wanna give this a little 3D lift here. And then I'm just gonna balance these out just as I have before. That looks pretty good and we'll take off those backings. You know, someone recently asked me, what's your guilty crafting pleasure? I <laughs> said, that's easy. I use way too many dimensionals. Anybody else with me who uses too many dimensionals? But I love the look of the card. Now this is going to get adhesive. And once again, you're gonna to wanna to pay very close attention to where I'm going to put this. Look, I pushed too hard. The one thing about this adhesive, as I told you, is it's very, very, very strong. So if you're going too fast like me and you're pushing too hard, that's what's gonna happen. All right, remember this, crease on the right. So it's gonna open this way, backwards. And I'm just looking to center this. This is where I love my grid paper. And we're gonna place that here, all right? That second layer. Let's move on now to the last layer. And just like before, I've got some designer series paper here, okay? You know, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp. Let me show you a cool, cool thing about the stamp set. The crease is here and I'm hoping that you can kind of see that in the video, but I'm gonna go back to that basic gray ink. And in this stamp set, there is this really cool clothesline image, which obviously can be used for lots of fun backgrounds. But let me show you what I did. Because it's long and thin, you are going to wanna to ink and travel across the pad. The worst thing you can do is try to rock this image in the ink pad. Ask me because I've done it. We are going to look for where the crease is 
and then we are trying to stay within the perimeter and then we are going to stamp. Lots of firm, even pressure to get that design out and then we're going to lift, okay? So I have excess here in my scratch paper, which is fine. Now I have another sample of this exact same five by seven card with stamped images, but this time I decided I wanted to up my game a little bit. So for this one, I decided to do some die cutting. So let me show you what I did. I did this ahead of time. So I've got the onesie from the dies. Look at those little clothespins. Is this not adorable or what? And here's another one. This fine tip precision glue is going to be a game changer for you. You are literally going to put a drop. You're going to pick up your clothespin and raise it right on top and it's going to be dry in seconds. It's fantastic. Now let me show you what I did about laying these out. I'm going to start with the saffron colored one and then I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to be using my dimensionals. So again, I want to make sure that this is fairly well balanced as possible. And while I've got that upside down, let's go ahead and do this one as well. And I'm going to show you how we can space this out. The stamps and the stamp set are as equally as wonderful as the dies. And I know that you're going to enjoy them because I'm going to show you the one that I actually stamped versus the one that I've die cut. And then you can decide which one you like better. I love using designer series paper scraps for something like this because it gives it a whole lot of definition. Now keep in mind that silicone craft sheet, nothing's going to stick to it. So if I put it upside down, we're good to go. We're going to take this one and we're going to work all the way here on this side, but we want it to look as if it's hanging. Then I'm going to take this one, I'm going to place that one here, and let's put that one here on this side. Is this not just adorable? Okay, and then this one is going to go here. This gives me room now for another greeting. I'm able to use the stamp set, all the pieces. And this one says, hello, little one. Now, all this is going to make a lot more sense in just a minute when we assemble this Z fold. Let me go ahead and close up my ink pads. We're going to add that designer series paper here to the front. And then I'm going to show you how to assemble it. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the rest of this card as well as the other samples. Now, one of the mistakes I made originally is make sure that if this has a pattern, it's going in the same direction as the one on the front, right? So I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to get my adhesive going here. Not going to press really hard because apparently it's been a Monday for me, right? And I'm working around my edges. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this here to the front. My crease is now on the traditional side. I'm going to open this up and I'm leaving a border all the way around. And then we're going to tack that in place. Okay, are we ready? This is a pocket for a gift card for a baby. How perfect. Do you recall these other pieces? All right, let's start from the bottom up. We've got our full base of our card. We have the center card backwards. We are gonna flip this over. We are going to use our adhesive and we're gonna go around the outside perimeter. If you are using liquid glue to adhere this, please do not place it too close to the outside edges because it's going to ooze and it's gonna make a big mess. Ask me how I know. What you need to know is that this layer needs to be at the bottom of this layer. So I'm gonna move this up inside your camera view so that you can see. I am going to hover to make sure the crease is on the right and I'm looking at the bottom. I want to make sure as I'm close to the bottom as possible and I'm looking to see if this space and this space are about visually equal. And then we're gonna tack that in place. I am gonna take the gift card out for just a moment because I found it's a lot easier to adhere it without that bulk in there. And this time we're gonna add adhesive to the back side of this card. So we're gonna do the exact same thing with adding our adhesive around the perimeter. Again, my Stamp and Seal Plus is very, very strong. Just like we've done here, you need to work at the bottom because this card is freestanding. So I'm looking here and here, and again, looking to leave the same amount of space on both sides the very best that I can. And then once I'm happy with it, we're gonna tack that in place and give that a really good push. And then I'm gonna add my gift card. Now you know I'm not done if you've watched my videos before because I love bling and this is no exception. So let me show you these. These are the 2021-23 in color jewels. They are also on the last chance list and I'm having a little remorse because I really love the colors. They have a great tendency to pick up other shades that are very closely related. Now let me show you why I wanted to use these. So I'm gonna take one of the larger ones and I'm gonna work it all the way up here on that large base. Then I'm gonna take a smaller one 
and I'm going to place it here so there's a visual angle. But down here, I don't know if you recall even noticing this or not, there's like a little snap, a little highlighted area there, and that's a perfect spot for another gem. And that gives this a really great 3D look. Now, are you ready how this is going to go? Here's your aerial. Here's your Z-fold. All right, so it's going to open like this. So you've got your first greeting. Congratulations on a growing family. Little hands, little feet, big love, and then hello, little one. Great place for you to have a lot of people sign, additional gift cards if you want them. And it's really a fantastic on a large gift, especially if you're doing like a stroller or a pack and play, something that's going to be larger. Now, you might be wondering about an envelope, but I got you covered. Don't worry. This is an envelope punch board. And again, this is linked for you in my craft room favorites. Ahead of time, I went ahead and I created a coordinating envelope for you using the designer series papers. So I chose the stripe to match my card as the outside. I wasn't concerned that I had a floral inside. I really don't think that matters, but here's what I love about it, right? Because it fits perfectly. Now, if you have never used an envelope punch board, you are in for a treat. Now, I wanna make sure I don't get my little onesie stuck in there because all the sizes are printed on here and you wanna talk about silly easy, anybody can do this, even one of the kids. This is a fantastic buy and you're gonna want it for those odd size envelopes. Now you'll recall that this one here, actually, I'm gonna pull it out because I wanna show you the difference between the stamped one. And I made this envelope kind of tight so you guys are all gonna forgive me, right? Okay, so here was my stamped, this was my, actually my die cut one. This is my stamped one. So I made this one earlier today, exact same thing, but look here. So I used the stamps versus the dies. Isn't that great? And look at, there's a little close pin die. Don't you love that? So whether you wanna make it quick, you want to make it a little bit more fussy is up to you. Now, because many of you have asked for the five by seven, which is what this is, some of you are not necessarily into these larger cards. So I've got you covered. Here's an A2 size. This uses the stamp set called Plentiful Plants. And right now this is offered as a bundle through May 2nd. The bundle itself, which is the stamps and the dies are on the last chance products list and you're gonna want both. Check out that plant stand. So once again, we can build a whole little phrase here. Don't you love that? A little note with the biggest thanks. And then here we go. You were there and I am very grateful. And then thank you. Believe it or not, this is the designer paper. You want the designer series paper that matches this because it makes creating your cards cohesive, quick, and simple. Absolutely stunning. And then I have one other for you that is completely not a five by seven or even a little thank you note. This one is really bright and fun and it can be used for any occasion. This uses nothing's better than stamp set and the love you more than dies. So I kept this very, very simple and this is all from the same stamp set. Today's plan, consume coffee. Look at these cute images. Chocolate, I know some of you are like, say what? I know, all the supplies are listed for you. I stamped this on vellum and I just cut a whole bunch of pieces out of the chocolate and threw it inside that jar punch. And I added the little foil there for the topper, but wait, there's more. And because adulting is hard, we also need cookies. So this would be a fantastic birthday card. It could be a cheer up card. It could be, I'm missing you. Lots and lots of fun. Now, the best part about your project sheet is it's going to include multiple pictures of each of these cards along with those cutting dimensions. You're not gonna to wanna to miss grabbing it. It's completely free. And do me a favor, let me know which one of those is your favorite. Now, if you're not into five by seven cards, you're going to downsize this. And I wanna give you an important tip about making this card. The sizes are graduating, so let me explain. This is five by seven, four by six, and then three by five. So get creative. You can do any graduated sizes that you want on any size card. So if you want bigger, go for it and enjoy it. Do me a favor and head over to lisasstampstudio.com. If you're brand new, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see the word subscribe nice and big. I would love to add you to my free weekly e-newsletter. You're gonna get a tutorial every Thursday a PDF tutorial with pictures and cutting dimensions and supplies to make a project from home. It is no frills, which means I would love to have you included. So go ahead and sign up. That's sent electronically to you by email every Thursday. 
And while you're there, check out how you can request a new catalog and also check out my very vast PDF tutorial library. I am thrilled that you're with me, but I would be even more excited if you'll come back with me next week. Now there is a different date for next week, so I want to make sure that you are aware with it. Next week is Wednesday, April 13th. I'm checking my calendar at eight o'clock Eastern time. I've got an amazing fun pivoting card for you that you're not going to want to miss. And there'll be six additional samples with that live demonstration. And I sure hope that you're going to be here with me. Gina, thanks for all your hard work moderating tonight. And I look forward to seeing you all with me next week. Have a blessed day.